guys, welcome to the A Lot of Thoughts podcast. I'm Courtney and I'm Anna and we are here to share a lot of thoughts about a lot of things including I want to tell a story about um I'm not really like an angry driver so I'm pretty chill. I'm pretty like if you're going slow unless I'm in a hurry I'm just like sure man just just go at your pace. I mean you know within reason like I've been behind people who are going, like, 20 under, and I'm like, okay, at this point, we're not being safe. Yeah. But the other day, I was driving. We have this place, um, you know, the New Publix, yeah. that light. Yeah. And when you go through the light, the left lane ends, and the right lane keeps going. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't know that the, the left lane ends, and you can kind of tell who does, but a lot of people go into that lane just to speed ahead of everybody else. Yeah. And I casually pulled up. There were two cars in the left lane, one car in the right. I didn't even change lanes. I just pulled up on the right lane because I don't like passing people. I don't like that risk of, what if I can't get over? Yeah. So I casually pulled in behind the second car, and there's this big truck next to me. Second car in on the left, and they're on the line. So it looked like maybe they were trying to get over, but they didn't have a, a flasher on, and I'm like, one of those people, if you turn on your turn signal, I'm just going to let you go. Yeah. I'm not going to fight letting people in in front of me or anything. So the light turns green, and I, like, had – I usually, like, go pretty fast because I don't like people just jumping in front of me. Mm-hmm. So I speed ahead, and the first car on the left goes faster than me and pushes their way in. Happens pretty much every time on that road. So used to it. The truck next to me, big truck, and I'm telling you, this guy looked like he belonged in, like, the, like, the Robertson family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he had, like, oh, like, he looks, he reminded me my quick glance as I'm driving and trying not to go off the road, um, hint, hint, he looked like Uncle Cy. Yeah. And I'm driving, and he's determined. He stayed next to me to the lane end. And there was nowhere for me to go but either the ditch or into his truck or keep going straight. And I didn't feel like he was about to budge. And it scared me. I'm, I'm like a more timid driver. So I slammed on my brakes. But don't worry because the car, <laughs> the car in front of that truck went 45 on a 55 road. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so he had to go slow. slow. And then I... I was a little sinful. I got on his bumper <laughs> and I honked like 20 times and then five minutes down the road honked a few more times. But I repented. <laughs> this is my fun story. I like literally I've never felt so unsafe in my life. Out. Like and I'm I'm one of those like pretty safe drivers. Yeah. So we also have a turn into our apartment where if you don't turn on your turn signal like five minutes ahead of time, people will be like texting or whatnot, and people have Won't had to slow go. Down. Yeah, they've had to go off the side of the road to uh, not run into us before. Paul's had it happen. I've had it happen. Yikes! Are you a careful driver? You are, right? Yeah. After I got in a car accident when I was oh, eighteen, yeah. and so now I'm very cautious. Eighteen and pregnant. Eighteen and pregnant. <laughs> yes, ma'am. But Myra's Myra's okay. She survived. Yeah. That was, like, the biggest concern I had. Paul woke me up in the middle of the night that night and was like, I mean, I hadn't even been, we hadn't been married even a year Mm-mm, at that no, point. No, 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 no. And, Joseph and I had only been married four months or five months. Yeah, so I barely knew you, and he wakes me up and goes, Anna's been in a car accident, and I'm like, <laughs> and then I went to sleep in the morning, I was like, did you wake up, wake me up and tell me something? Didn't he go down there? Yeah, he came to the hospital. Yeah. yeah. That, that touched was, me. That, that was so sweet that so, he came to the hospital. So if you're ever like, Paul really doesn't like me, you are like, no, that one time he thought I might have been hurt. Yeah. Came down to the hospital. Yeah, car crashes will make you um, a better driver. Oh. I think, for most people, I think. I think. I, I hope. Yes. Yeah. Paul did for me, and it made me like, First of all, be a better driver myself, but also be a super defensive driver mm-hmm. because I'm like, who's who's about to turn into me yeah. here? Oh, yeah. That's what, with Paul, I always tell him, I'm like, my worry is not your driving necessarily. My worry is other people because I don't trust other people. And so 
He can, like, drive with his knees. And I'm like, uh, let's, let's be careful. Yeah. So, Joseph careful. is a good driver. He actually got to be a better driver after my wreck, too, because I was so freaked out to be in a vehicle. And so, and, like, I was always gasping. Mm-hmm. He would, like, turn and be like, <gasps> and yeah. so he got to be, like, really a gentle driver. But he drives a huge truck, and I will say, one of our <laughs> biggest, like, nitpicky things is yeah. when he drives my car, he drives it like it's a go-kart. <laughs> because he's used to being in his huge truck, and so I guess he just feels so free or whatever. <laughs> I feel like he takes the turns like a go-kart. Yeah, so... Well, he sorry. loves when I tell him, like, stop driving in my car like a go-kart, please. <laughs> and then I'm more not nice about it when I'm pregnant. I mean... If you take... I have told him, if you take turns like that, I'm going to throw up on your lap. Like, <laughs> I, I am going to make sure to throw up on you if you keep driving like this. That's, I'm really nice. <laughs> that's like on The Office whenever she asks... Pam asked Dwight not to eat the eggs. Yes, and then she throws up and, and she looks, just looks at, at it. Whole time. <laughs> He, told, he promptly told me I'm disgusting oh, when I said that. Listen, I've done things like that, too. I mean, I'm not pregnant, so it hasn't been. I wouldn't yet, actually but, throw up on him, but, but I wouldn't stop the throw up from having him tell you that. I can't help it if you're driving like this. Oh. Oh, gosh. So, anyway, if you want to ride with anybody in the car, it's me and Anna. Yeah. Woo. Joseph's honestly probably a better driver than me. If he listened to this, he would be, like, probably a better <laughs> driver than you. Paul would be like, I am the best driver of all the drivers. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, he, yeah, he has not been in an accident. Yeah. That's, yeah. I, I got into an accident, but it was bumping someone's bumper when it was, it was pouring down rain, and Paul John was... He was in. He was little, and he was screaming in his car seat. That'll do it. And we were going down um, one of the busier roads, and it was back to back traffic. Yeah. And I barely touched her bumper, and I got out in the rain and checked her bumper, went around, walked through this grass, and got all kinds of bug bites. Oh no. And then I go up to her window, and I'm crying, and I'm like, I, I hate you, but I don't see anything. I'm so sorry. And she was like, I called the police. <gasps> And then just stared at me until I left. So. One time I was driving Joseph's truck, and we went to the Kroger here in Zebulon, and his, he has a work truck, and it, it's scratched up, and it has a bunch of dents in it already. So this woman, like, Ellie and I were actually coming out of Kroger, and she's standing by the truck, and she's, like, crying. She's, like, middle-aged woman, freaking out, and I come out, and she's, like, I ran into your truck oh. and right here and I'm so sorry and and here's all my information and it was just like a small fist size little dent and I was like no 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 it's all right like it's okay <laughs> this is a work and she's like no but I'm so like she I guess the reaction when someone does that is like they're really really mad yeah and I kept I had to like calm her down yeah. and reassure her like I'll take your information, but I, I can almost promise you my husband's not going to follow through yeah. with, like, getting this dent down. If you down. had driven away, <laughs> yeah. we would not have known. <laughs> no, I really wouldn't have known. Oh, wait, I got a cool car story. Okay. One time in Some middle Some people are going to have to skip through this. Yeah, you be can like, skip This is so okay. irritating. This is an interesting story, though. One time, I don't think my sister listens to this. I just found out my mom listens. Shout out to mom. Aw. Um, she was like... Does Anna know if she's having a boy or a girl yet? And I was like, Anna, what? Oh, that's and then she funny. was like, You said it on your podcast. And I was like, Yeah, oh. we announced it here first. But I yeah. figured not enough people listen in my life that, yeah. like, my immediate. Life, no one's written on your timeline no, and said, Congrats. No, no, but we're no. taking her announcement photo today. Yeah. So, also, and this is Next going week, up. It'll be like, Facebook official. Woo. Um, and this is Sunday, and this is going up Monday, because we're really ahead of the game here. <laughs> um, so when I was, like, in middle school or high school, my sister had, I think she had recently gotten her car. No, 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 no. Her first car, that was kind of not her fault. She, um, we were in the car, 
going to cheerleading tryouts because that's another story for another day. <laughs> and she was turning right, but there were these bushes she couldn't see, and this car rammed into us. It was so bad. Oh, no. It was totaled. Oh, no. Um, I didn't know that. So one day when I was in middle school or high school, I told her I wanted to go to the library, and she needed to drive me. And so we get in the car. I'm in the passenger car, she, passenger side. She's in the driver's side, and she backs up. She forgot someone was at our house, oh, no. and she was not cautious at 16, and she backed up, and she, <laughs> it was like the back of the car hit the front of the other car, and then she just kept going, and she's like, what's that noise? So far that I literally couldn't get out. I had to crawl out because I, she went that far backing up into the car, so... My dad, I remember after that, he made her, like, wash off the rear view mirrors and everything. Now, the only reason I have not dealt with that is I got my license at, how old was I? I look at you like you know. I don't, I don't know. know. I was married yeah. for a couple of years before I got I my license. I was 18. Well, obviously, because I got my car accident <laughs> when I was 18. And she learned her lesson yes, quick. I, <laughs> I backed into my sister-in-law's car. And promptly cried my eyes out because if I had to back into any of my sister-in-law's car, she'd be the second to last one. <laughs> Not because she's a mean person, but because she takes care of her car say, yeah. so much better than like I take care. Like she, yeah. like her car is her baby. Yeah. Like she really goes out of her way to take care of I it. I love and those I people. Backed up. I want to be one of those people one day. Too. Like without the. This like, is a way that you and I probably aren't good for each other. Is that <laughs> neither of us spur each other on to like have cleaner cars? Wait, listen though. I'm going on my trip next week, so I have to clean my car this week. Okay. So if it hits Saturday, you can be like, Courtney, did you clean your car? And if not, you'd be like, Courtney, clean your car. I clean my car so bad. It don't is... we all? So this is your reminder. Hey, if you haven't cleaned your car lately, Anna and Courtney are kindly reminding you we that will, you should clean your car. We will not be putting a picture up on our Instagram. <laughs> this is our car. Mine has a we Starbucks cookie cleaning. wrapper. We should probably like be cleaning, cleaning our cars more than yeah. doing this recording right now. That's okay. I cleaned my house yesterday, so, uh, yeah. Anyway, okay. we're doing another Galatians episode. Um, we welcome to the real part of this. Um, so, we're going to just go through Galatians 2. I thought it kind of worked all well together to go through all of it. So, Anna, if you want to go ahead, we're going to read it in um, two different sections. If you can read verses 1 through 14. Then, after fourteen years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, and also took Titus with me. And I went up by revelation and communicated to them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles, but privately to those who were of reputation, lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. Yet not even Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And this occurred because of false brethren. I'm sorry, I lost my place. Jeez, Anna. Sorry. Verse 4. Yeah. And this occurred because a false brethren secretly brought in, who came in by stealth to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ, Jesus, that they might bring... <laughs> this print is so small! Do you want to read it off of my computer? Yes. I'm so sorry. Um, I apologize. It's so tiny. You're right there. But we did not... Yield in subjection to them for even an hour, so that the truth of the gospel would remain with you. But from those who were on high reputation, what they were, what they were makes no difference to me. God shows no partiality. While those who were of reputation contributed nothing to me. But on the contrary, seeing that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised, just as Peter had been to the circumcised. For he who effectually worked for Peter in his apostleship to the circumcised, effectually worked for me also to the Gentiles. And recognizing the grace that had been given to me, James... And Cepheus and John, who were reputed to the pillars, gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, so that we might go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. They only asked us to remember the poor, the very thing I was also eager to do. But when Cepheus came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. 
For prior to the coming of certain men from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he began to withdraw and hold himself aloof, fearing the party of the circumcision. The rest of the Jews joined him in hypocrisy, with the result that even Barnabas was carried away by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas in the presence of all, If you, being a Jew, live like the Gentiles and not like the Jews, how is it that you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? I'm sorry for that being so choppy. I have just drank a cold brew from Dunkin' Donuts, (laughs) and I'm a little jittery. Not sponsored. I apologize. I <laughs> no, can read. it's okay. I promise. It's, can she though? No. I think um, I did last time. <laughs> so, um, this first section is again kind of him recounting a little bit of the history. If you remember, he said that it was after I think it was three years he actually went to Jerusalem after his conversion, so it was like a three-year gap. But he went for like a short visit, and then he went back. And then it says after 14 years. 14. So he really, like, which surprises me. I don't know why, but he didn't really know, like, Peter and James and John. It wasn't like they were all, like, hanging out yeah. every night yeah. eating dinner. Um, but that is just another confirmation that what he preached was entirely from God. Mm-hmm. Um, he, and he didn't get his authority from the leaders in Jerusalem. So he didn't get his authority from Peter or anything. Um, but it really would have been harder for him to share the gospel if he didn't have their backing, Yeah, you know, yeah. um, which was kind of why he went to them. Now, interesting note that I found when I was studying is that in this, when he talks about those of reputation, and at one point he talks about the pillars, which would have been James, Peter, and John. He kind of actually is saying that facetiously because he's kind of like, because the Judaizers, remember, they, they tried to take down Paul personally. So he's kind of like, even these men of high reputation, even though those men of high reputation, it's not like they thought themselves better than anyone else. Although I guess Peter did have a problem with that <laughs> in this. Um, so, interesting note. Uh, it talks about Titus in verse 3. He wasn't compelled to be circumcised. And, of course, that's the whole thing that Galatians is about, is the Judaizers saying mm-hmm. they need to be circumcised. Just trying to give, like, a little review as we go along. Um, but it reminded me of Timothy, because, remember, Paul did circumcise Timothy. Mm-hmm. And so I was looking closer at why, but Timothy was half Jewish. So he was circumcised as a Jew to witness to the Jews. Okay. It wasn't him as a Christian yeah. being circumcised. So, next, in verse 4, that's when we really start to see him um, get sassy again. (laughs) And he calls these Judaizers false brethren. Um, They were adding to the gospel. And so, it's not like Paul is like, oh, these Judaizers... They just are making some mistakes or, or you know what, it's it's like baptizing babies, you know, like, I believe you can be a born-again Christian and believe in baptizing babies. It wasn't like that type of issue. This was something being added to the gospel, so he does call them false brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, you know, the Judaizers probably thought they were in the right. They legitimately, but it was because they were relying on themselves. Yeah. You know? um, so I have a quote here from Matthew Henry. They have the form of godliness without the power of it. They think they believe the articles of faith are right, but they are deceived. For to believe in Christ crucified is not only to believe that he was crucified, but also to believe that I am crucified with him. Mm -hmm. Which I think is just very, when we've talked about quote-unquote nominal Christianity before, how many people who think that they are fully in the right and are adding works, even not realizing it, Yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think that's just very, very relevant. Um, let's talk really quick about the word freedom because um, he talks in this book um, several times about, like, here in, in this translation, which I actually, yeah, New American, it is, um, 
liberty. So he says they came in to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, in order to bring us into bondage. And so that can be, be kind of misleading. Um, I think of the people who say, like, I'm a Christian, but I don't. That's like a thing on social media, right? There was like a yeah. BuzzFeed video or something that said I, all these people were like, I'm a Christian, but I'm gay or something like yeah. that. I, I couldn't think of another one. But um, it reminded me of that. But freedom in Christ is not just freedom to It's not freedom to sin at all. No, and I think, like, I... I sh- I struggle with some people, um, it makes, thankfully it makes me dig into my, what my position is on things, but people who are like, well, I have freedom in Christ for X, Y, Z, and it's not out there stuff like homosexuality, right? It's like other self-care or self-wisdom or, or those types of things and it's like, well, I have freedom in Christ to explore this. Mm-hmm. And I think we have to be really careful to understand what freedom in Christ actually means. Like, freedom in Christ doesn't mean we go looking for anything outside of Christ. Yeah. And outside of the standard of the Bible, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, you can take that so far. You know what I mean? Yeah. It starts off innocent, and then you can, I don't know. Like, I've I've seen it taken to places where it's like, next, you know, next thing you know, you're a liberal Christian. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Am I making sense at all? I was just looking at a Facebook group, and, um... I'm not going to say specific, so I think it's okay for me to say. Someone said, like, that they're a conservative, but they don't follow all the norms of conservative stuff. Can you tell me, what's your thing? And there are several people who are saying, like, I'm a Christian, but I use crystals. or Yeah. And that's, that's, like, that's more of an extreme thing. but, But if you look at what the argument was over, it was over circumcision, which was something that was commanded by God to be done in the Old Testament. So how much more can you, how much more is it not worth it to go to these things that are not even allowed in Scripture? Yeah. Um, It's, our freedom is not, what do they say, like, if you take something that's not Christian and you, like, bring it into Christianity? Like, Christian. There's a word for that. Like, I can't remember what it is. But, um. I think it's just people not having a clear understanding of what freedom in Christ mm-hmm. means. Which, I, I'm, like I said, it, it makes me dig into what my position is yes. more. Which is a yeah. good thing. It's good to have, you know to be challenged in a way that makes you dig into actually understanding, okay, I know something's off about this, but I don't Mm -hmm. know exactly what it is. Let me go see what freedom in Christ actually means in the Bible. Like, what is the context here? And as you're growing in sanctification and you're seeking to know from God what freedom in Christ means, um, just like a, a quick example. So Bible reading. We did an episode on that two weeks ago, and imagine I finished that episode, and I I told very clearly in that episode that I have plenty of time in the mornings to read my Bible, Mm -hmm. but imagine if after that I was like, well, God doesn't command that I have to read, really, so how about I just read, like, a chapter a day, but I have plenty of time, I mean, that's that's taking freedom and going the wrong direction, too, like, And whenever you're really wanting to follow Christ and you're focused on what we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, Christ's sacrifice and justification, whenever all that comes to light, freedom in Christ is not something that you're trying to wiggle out of. Yeah. Um, Because how did you get the freedom? Like, according to my Reformation Study Bible, freedom is from the curse the law pronounces on sin. When you think about that freedom, how did you get that? By the sacrifice of Christ. So why would you try and push the limit? (laughs) Yep. I feel like we've talked about this before in an episode. I think so. Like, look for the loophole. Yep. Like, you really don't want to do that because that's only going to lead you. I I mean, like, 
not I don't like the blanket statements, but I know personally whenever I've tried that, it's just led me into sin. Mm -hmm. If that, and I'm not, I'm not saying that's the case every time, but yeah. I feel like it's. Well, it's kind of like when I was. Why you be doing that? Yeah. <laughs> why you, why, yes. you, why you be doing that, Anna? <laughs> that's your quote for the day. So, whenever I was like a middle schooler and I had little siblings, every night before bed, we decided to like rile up the little siblings. Were you guys like oh, that? Oh, yeah. Too? Yeah, oh, and your yeah. mom would be like, no, stop that. They need to go to bed yeah. and you're going to get hurt. And then they'd like slap you in the face yeah, and you'd yeah. cry. Yeah. And your mom would be like, told, told you so. You. <laughs> and it's kind of like that. It's like, you know, you you can mess with these things. Go Like, freedom and, like, if you really want to, like, I don't know. I'm I'm just saying it's not like God strikes you down right then. But you need to be careful. Yeah. Because there is a reason God tells us not to do certain things. And he's yeah. not, it's not our job as Christians to test freedom and sin, freedom to sin. Um, you know, we should be wanting to refrain from it. Yeah. Um, at all costs. Yeah. Um, so I think the real question is, um, what does it really do when we add works to the gospel? This is, goes back to Christ's death on the cross and how it covers all sin. And it's complete. He, he drank the cup to the full. There were no little droplets left in there. Honestly, I just said that and I got a picture of like whenever we were eating something really, really good and... When you were a kid, of course, because I never do this as an adult, and you eat something like a with like a sauce, and then you lick mm -hmm, the plate because mm -hmm. it's mm, it's so good. Mm -hmm. That that was a really bad metaphor, <laughs> but I was just sharing the picture that came into my mind because I'm sure um, I'm bearing left. our sin was not something that was enjoyable. So okay, um, but I remember when we were at G3, and oh, who was it? Oh my goodness, I can't remember his name. Uh, Stephen Lawson. Mm -hmm. And he said something like, the blood that was shed on the cross was sufficient. It was exactly what needed to happen. There is no blood of Christ wasted. Um, and at the same time, there's no lack of covering by the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. So, on the other hand, we're talking about freedom to sin, like people who think they are free to sin. At the same time, this legalism of... Um, they were talking about circumcision, but think about the things that we've been told, especially recently, that we need to do to be right with God. Um, and some of the things are byproducts of it. Like, you're going to be a nicer, kinder person if you're growing in sanctification. <laughs> you should be. But there is no requirement to repent of sins we haven't done. There's no requirement to go to the mission field in Zimbabwe. And yet there's this kind of narrative that we, like that, like if you're not doing something, then are you really actually saved? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just considering Christ's sacrifice, it's just not like, out of all the things to mess with, um, Matthew Henry said, There are things which may lawfully be complied with, yet when they cannot be done without betraying the truth, they ought to be refused. Um, and what we see here is Paul was unwilling to betray the truth for something that seemed right. I mean, it says in there that Peter went with it and then Barnabas followed. So obviously this was some sort of convincing argument. And I'm not going to say that we can see a direct correlation today, but we can see a direct correlation today. Um, how many things do we hear that seem right? I think it's John Harris who talks about um, people talk about like viewing um, like gospel issues, which I've said, I think I've said that term before, meaning like um, things that, separate like you can't believe sin is okay and be a christian like mm -hmm. you can't believe homosexuality is okay and mm -hmm. be a true born again believer that type of thing but what he's talking about is like looking at social justice with the gospel glasses and like just i don't know if i'm making sense but just <sighs> taking and twisting things to make more necessary 
for salvation than what is necessary. And it's very subtle. It sounds right. It all sounds right. It's the, that's the scariest part. Um, so just some more notes as we keep going on. So, um, like I said, he went there not because he needed authority from, um, James, Peter, and John, but because he just wanted to be on good terms with them. And one of the things, um, it talks about the right hand of fellowship. And I just thought this was interesting in near East in what? I just read my note just straight up in Near East, <laughs> in the Near East, um, right hand of fellowship was like a solemn vow of friendship and a mark, mark of fellowship or partnership. So it wasn't even the way he words that implies that he was on the same level apostleship wise. Mm -hmm. Um, in verse 10, it talks about remembering the poor. Now there was a famine going on. So this could have been, it kind of depends on when he, this, remember we talked about, there's no like clear decision of when this was written. Um, so it could have been, um, taking money from Antioch to the Christians in Judea, um, because of a famine, or it could have just been, um, him collecting, um, money for the saints, um, that the Galatians would have contributed to. Um, either way, interesting point to consider. There were a lot of people who were getting saved back then. Um, the church was growing so much and it wasn't cool to be a Christian back then. It wasn't easy. And so people couldn't get jobs. Like there were Christians who just couldn't find jobs because no one would hire them. So this time, I think it's easy to read this with like, um, like Bible the, glasses yeah, on. Yeah, <laughs> you read this with Bible glasses. Doesn't your dad say that? Yes. Yeah, I thought that's Constantly, where you were pulling yeah. from. Um, so it's easy to read it like that, but like this was not a time of ease. When they talk about like the early church bringing all their stuff together, like it's not like they were all like, they were rolling in the dough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but they were still willing to persevere. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, like, as you're reading the letters, um, now obviously this church had some issues, but um, interesting note, Antioch was the first city that was recorded with both Jews and Gentiles worshiping together, and that was also the first church to send missionaries out to preach directly to the Gentiles. Um which I still think is funny because there's this just long period of time where, like, Gentiles were not being reached out to. And can you imagine if you had lived during that time and you weren't a Jew, like, from our perspective, like, yeah. I am grateful for the grace of God of living in 2020, um, even despite how yeah. 2020 is. Yeah. Um, so you read, where did you read to? Okay, I want to make sure I didn't get too far past. So... It's interesting to note how Paul actually addressed Peter. Um, he addressed it publicly because it was a public offense. Yeah. Which, that's a big thing now, a big argument. Like, if you see false teaching on the internet, like, you need to go and hunt that person down and talk yeah. to them. And I think it was Michelle Leslie who wrote about um, how she tried to actually talk to Rick Warren before, like, exposing some things that he said. And... Um, she called, like, the church, and the secretary, like, took a message, and she never heard back. And it was after that, I think, she said that she realized, like, he publicly teach, teached, taught. <laughs> taught something that was not okay. And she, that's why we have people like her, um, Justin Peters, um, different people who are in discernment ministries, who it's okay because these are public offenses. Yep. Um, now, if Anna did something... I wouldn't necessarily, like, jump in front of the church and be like, Anna, <laughs> why'd you do this? But at the same time, also, church discipline, mm -hmm. um, it seems harsh to have someone get in front of the church and say, I think we've been recording with the wrong microphone the whole time. Are you serious? It's okay. I think it'll be fine. Okay. Hold on. Back with a good microphone. <laughs> I was wondering why you were so loud, and I was like, she's not normally that loud, so <laughs> if you're jumping in here, you got the new microphone, but why would you jump in in 34 <laughs> minutes? So anyway, now that we got the right mic, I don't know what I was talking about, hold on. Um, 
Oh, so he addressed him publicly. Augustine, 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 I don't know how you actually say it, said, it is not advantageous to correct in secret an error which occurred publicly, which we talked about this recently, and I think we're going to do an episode on, like, um, sin and how your sin will find you out. And Yes. And, I mean, how much harder is it to correct some, Like, can you imagine if Paul just kind of quietly was like, hey, Peter, man. Because then it would be on Paul to stand up, or Peter, to stand up and publicly recant what he said. Yeah. Instead, Paul graciously and kindly gave him a way to say um, that, like, he, he was wrong. He had an opportunity to take that in and say yes publicly. And even as we continue through Galatians in just a minute, we'll see that Paul doesn't, um, a lot of times he uses, like, the pronoun we versus you. Like, he's not super accusatory because Paul knows how fallible he is. Yeah. Um, and he wasn't trying to, like, insult him or, like, embarrass him. Um, but obviously Peter was afraid of losing popularity. Um, So there are a few things to learn from this section. This is from John MacArthur. I just thought this was so good. First of all, even gifted pastors are fallible. Um, So you can't rely on your pastor as, like, the word of God himself. Um, Right doctrine without right behavior always produces hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. You can believe all the right things, but if you don't follow through, it's not cool. Three, truth is more important than outward harmony and peace. This commentary that I got this from is really old. Mm, but that sometimes. Hurts my feelings because I don't know to what extent is it's um, appropriate to take that. Like, I'm literally just asking a question. Yeah. Like, let's say there's someone I extreme. Not to take. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to take us away from this. No, at all, you're but, fine. Like, if there's someone who I extremely disagree with what they're posting on their Facebook. Do I call that out publicly on their page? (laughs) Well, um, (laughs) first of all, I would say that if they're, like, a preacher, then I think that they're held to a different standard Mm -hmm. than, like, me or you. Now, of course, on our podcast page, that's different. Yeah. Um, Podcast page is different than my personal page. Not that I post different things, but that... One of them is explicitly, like, a public yeah. forum. And I I'm, guess, too, it's kind of like, who who is that person? Who's their authority? Oh, yeah. Well, and I, I think that, because I've had I this guess happen. Paul was Peter's authority in this way. He, I mean, they were on the same level. Yeah. Like, neither of them, were, they were both apostles, but... It wasn't, it obviously wasn't out of place for him to be doing this. No. No, and I think, I think that's why if you saw someone that I, we've talked about it in our Disagreeing Well episode, um, that there are ways to approach people. And there are ways to approach people in a way that, like, they never talk to you again. Yep. And you probably don't want to go that way. Yeah. Um, but I think the best, I think the best answer here is what, um, what he did was he said, um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, this might be in the next section. Oh, no, no, no. He says at one point that he just, like, preached to them the same gospel that he preaches to the Gentiles. And I think I think that's really what happens is, um, or what needs to happen, is that we go back to the gospel. And so when you see a friend who is struggling with something, like, I don't, this is just like a blatant obvious example. They believe homosexuality is okay. You don't need to argue whether homosexuality is okay or not because they have a problem with the gospel itself. And actually, most of the time, they have a problem with creation itself. Mm -hmm. So you have to back it up and back it up and back it up. And so will your one comment on their post about how homosexuality is okay, will that do anything? Probably not. If you're close enough to them, then, and even if you're not, I guess, like, share the gospel with them. Um, But yeah, there are appropriate ways to handle, but... Peter was a public, that's hard to Peter was a public teacher, mm-hmm. and so that is why Paul addressed him this yeah. way. But yeah, if you had a problem with someone in your church, 
and you like went to them privately like hey i saw you post this on facebook i don't really agree with it let's talk about it and they were like you're dumb that's wrong you know <laughs> this is i'm making all this like super hy- hyperbolic um then yeah i would go i would go to your pastor um because that's his flock he's supposed to be caring maybe yeah. he didn't even know that they believed that but or maybe your doctrine's wrong. Who knows? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, go to someone who knows more than you um, in that case. So. Uh, next one. Situational ethics is ungodly ethics. So, meaning, like, there has to be a standard. And what the world has, like, ended up coming to is that like depending on what's going on it could be right or wrong Mm -hmm. best example of this is like abortion is it right or wrong like it's situational yeah like what about rape i like i'm i'm not going to answer that question on here yeah but i can point you to plenty of resources so well the nice thing i had a conversation with somebody who was legitimately asking me something yeah you know a question and you know like i would i could so easily answer just because our standard doesn't change and murder is never right. You know yeah. what I'm, like, when you know the standard, it doesn't matter the question. Yeah. Like, the answer doesn't change. Yeah. Like, is, like, is it okay to lie if it, like, protects someone? You know? Like, these are questions that come up and our response should be different than the world's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the last thing is falsehood is not to be ignored regardless of the consequences. Mm. So, you know, whenever mm. I've been struggling with that personally because I know some I people to. who, like, there's things like you know what people, like, read or who they listen to or who yeah. they quote on Facebook and you, like, you know that they just, like, don't know. Yeah. And you don't want to come off as, like, a jerk. I just don't know when to say, um... Got a child trying to enter the room. Like, there was a situation last night where somebody was just talking about things. And just, I was, I just listened the whole time. It was like a 20, 30 minute thing. Uh Like, just talking, talking, talking. And I so disagreed. So, like, it just, it was like. I was, like, concerned for this person that they Mm -hmm. were thinking these things. It was, like, concerning me for them. And I didn't say anything because I I have learned to keep my mouth shut. Like, and not just, like, ooh, ooh, wait, 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 listen. Like, that's not right. But. Yeah. I don't don't think I'm the person to speak into that person's life. No, I I totally, I totally get what you're saying. But I'm concerned because if they followed that theology through, it would not lead them to a good place. And I think here's something else we haven't said. Um, That God is more powerful than we are. Yeah. Uh, God can do more than our words or arguments can ever do. Yeah. So I have a, I have like on my prayer list, I have a couple people that I've had conversations with. A couple people who I have not had conversations with. Um, And I just pray for them. Pray that God would open their eyes to the reality of the gospel. Um, I don't know. It's not enough to look at it and be like, ah, who cares? But I also think back then they didn't have Facebook, so they weren't constantly being inundated with Well, this was an in-person. Oh, it was an in-person thing? It was an in-person thing. Oh, yeah. And it's hard because, like, you know, you love these people. And it's hard to hear, like, this is what yeah. this person thinks and believes. And it's it's scary because down the road, I don't think this is going to be the way they think it's going to be. Yeah. Like, and, well, there's a way to be gentle about it. And yeah. I, and I also, also, I don't want to have to know your audience. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Not audience, but... Sometimes it's just not worth it. Not in the way of, like, letting falsehood go forth. Yeah. But, but in the way of knowing I've, that... Sometimes I'm like, is... It, I've learned to be quiet and, like, really think, is wisdom keeping me quiet? It's not worth Or am I afraid? And it's like, no, 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 this is definitely a wisdom time. Yeah, it's like, not worth sinning to, to stop falsehood. Yeah. Or you know that, like, this person is going to need someone else 
yeah. to speak into their own. Because I'm yeah. a lady. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I was going to say another thing is, which I don't have all the answers, so I'm not trying to act I'm like sorry. I'm just spitting no, out answers, yeah, but yeah. I mean, another thing is, is that like, I think that again, what Paul does whenever he brings up the pronouns and he says like, we have done this, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't constantly say you, you or them. Or, yeah, now sometimes yeah. he does and it's right, but part of the reason he does that is because um, he's trying to take the blame off of them. So what if you had someone who was in person talking about that and you said, well, could you help me like understand how does that place with this scripture and yeah. just bring out the Bible, which is part of knowing God's word, yeah. which, um, very true. I mean, yeah, that's probably, I always like, it's kind of like at work. We have some rules that people don't like, like customers don't like. Hey, Abby, shout out to Abby. Mm. <laughs> she texts me every time. It's just like, Hey, I listen to your episode. <laughs> so, um, anyway, <laughs> when we're and literally what I do is I like blame my boss I had it happen the other day we don't sell like witchcraft books and this lady came in and she wanted tarot cards and I mean I'm all for an opportunity to witness but like there are places where it's just not like I'm not gonna witness to a customer that when I tell her her automatic reaction is arms crossed eyes rolled yeah and she's like mad like mad 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 like me getting run off the road mad yeah and she was like well why not yeah <laughs> and me and my coworker were like our boss doesn't let us yeah. um and I that sounds terrible that I like didn't take that moment to witness but like it you know diffuse the situation I'm like we just work here yeah <laughs> and I use that excuse all the time but I think about that with like God sometimes I'm like you know, I'm not saying that you're wrong, but what does scripture say? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't know if that made any sense at it all. It does. I understand what you're saying. It's, um, yeah, it's interesting thing to look at. Yeah. Are we okay. going to need to break this up? Yeah, I think we do. Okay. So let's go ahead and we're going to um, end this with, what music do you listen to lately? Um. Uh, I actually have been listening to Amy Grant hymns. <laughs> oh, that's better than my answer. I love hymns. Oh, and you know Ben Rector. <laughs> oh, Ben Rector. Magic. Okay, so can I admit my bad thing that I listen to? I know you listen to it too. <laughs> okay, what? <laughs> ha, what? <laughs> Taylor Swift's new album. Oh, yeah. It's good. Now there's a clean version. That's yeah. the one I listen to, and I don't listen to all the songs, but there's this song called Seven by her, mm -hmm. and it's not bad at all. Like, I there's know nothing it. bad in it. I know it. And it is just beautiful and magical, and I love it. Also, I don't think I said this, but I did finish Hunger Game or the new Hunger Games book, um, and it was so good and possibly one of the best books I've read in a long time. And I told my coworkers, so usually when I read a book and I really like it, I can like place a song with it. <coughs> That's the song Seven by Taylor really? Swift goes with the new Hunger Games. They match. Go listen to the song. It's beautiful. Anyway, um, I do not recommend her whole album, but that <laughs> song is okay. I think there's nothing in that. I don't think so. I don't think there's anything in that song. That's so. Um, anyway, I also listen to City of Light a lot. Christ is Mine Forevermore, which we did in mm. church today. That is one of my all time favorite songs, but also All My Ways Are Known to You by them. It's really good, and I've been reading about contentment, which we'll talk in the next episode about, and it's really good. But anyway, um, if you want to talk to us about what we talked about today, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, complaints, you can reach out to us on Instagram at a lot of thoughts podcast, or you can email us at a lot of thoughts podcast at gmail.com. Um, and I think that is it for today. Oh, you can leave like a rating or a review view and let us know what you think um so that we can improve over here um grow like podification like sanctification yeah. grow in podification that sounded weird anyway 